Hi there. Today I wanted to show you folks some interesting information on how binge drinking changes your immune system. Now this is based off of this paper here, published in the Journal of Immunology by Morale Darren et al., which focuses on how human binge alcohol intake inhibits TLR4, but not TLR3 mediated responses. Now, there are many different types of alcohol that varies in how it is made, how much alcohol concentration it has, and how much people enjoy it. To bring this all together, there's been a decision as to what a standard drink entails. So a standard drink is 12 fluid ounces of 5% alcohol or one and a half fluid ounces of 40% alcohol. And I know I'm familiar with, and you might be familiar with too, that the more you drink, the more impaired or inebriated you feel. And this is a result of your blood alcohol concentration going up. Your blood alcohol concentration is a measure of grams per ethanol per deciliter of blood in your system. Now, what binge alcohol consumption is considered is in this range here from 0 0.06 to 0.15% blood alcohol concentration, whereby the legal limit for uh, impaired driving is 0 0.08 in Canada. To get to this level is different for men and women typically. For women, it takes four or more drinks, whereas for men, it takes typically five or more drinks to get to this level of intoxication. Throughout the world, drinking is pretty common. However, alongside drinking, binge drinking is also pretty common. Now, this is a map of the share of people aged 15 and older who have had a heavy drinking session in the past 30 days which is described as having effectively six or more standard drinks at one time. This is a map showing the averages throughout each country, but as each country is subdivided into smaller territories, there are differing levels in each of those territories shown here as a map of Canada and the US of self-reported heavy drinking rates. Heavy drinking rates change based on geography. It also changes on now about 25% of the population aged 18 to 34 are binge drinking in your given month. And there's a really interesting metric that describes the deleterious effects of differing actions. And this is called a disability affected life year. Now this is a measure of per 100,000 people, the equivalent of losing one year in good health because of either premature death, disease, or disability. And so even though binge drinking is pretty widespread throughout the world, there are some places that are harder hit because of it. This is a map from the World Health Organization showing the disease burden in dailies from alcohol use disorders. And you can see that it is concentrated in the Northern Hemisphere and Western Hemispheres of the world. In addition to it geographically affecting people differently, it also affects people of different ages differently, with the highest disease burden being among people aged 50 to 69 years of age. Some of these deleterious effects seen from binge alcohol consumption are visible. You can see them. I've experienced them. You might have too, such as vomiting, memory loss, shakiness, accidents, or alcohol poisoning. There are also some effects that are a little bit harder to see and not as apparent such as damage to the brain, uh, inducing anxiety and depression, and changing how your mood is. Now, one thing that this illustration does not show is how binge drinking affects your immune response. From previously studied literature, we know that binge drinking actually inhibits the immune response. But what is unclear is the specific pathway in which that happens. So your immune response is mainly mediated by your immune cells, and you have a lot of them. They're broken up into two major groups. On the left, you have your innate response cells, which have fast-acting nonspecific responses to infections, and your adaptive response cells, which have a longer or which take longer to initiate, but have a tailored response to different uh, pathogens and infections. What I want to focus on and tell you about today is 
how binge alcohol consumption affects monocytes and macrophages. Now, on monocytes and macrophages, there are a bunch of immune receptors that help the cells respond to stimuli in their environments. One group of these immune receptors are called toll-like receptors, and there's a large number of them. The two that I'm focusing on today are TLR4 and TLR3. Now, toll-like receptor 4 is a cell surface receptor that primarily responds to lipopolysaccharide found in gram-negative bacteria outer walls. However, TLR4 can also recognize respiratory syncytial virus fusion protein. And when TLR4 is activated, it signals downstream via the proteins MyD88 and TRIF to activate pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines. MyD88 causes the secretion of TNF-alpha and IL-6, whereas TRIF mediates the type 1 interferon response, cytokines, interferon beta, IP10, and RANTES. In addition to TLR4, we have TLR3. And TLR3 is found inside of the endosomes inside of cells and responds to viral stimuli such as double-stranded RNA and poly-IC. TLR3 mediates signaling through TRIF, which causes a type 1 interferon response, which is identified by the secretion of interferon beta, IP10, and RANTES. Now, you may be asking why this is important. This has a definitive effect on our healthcare system because many people coming to emergency rooms have also been binge drinking. So this is seen quite commonly. As well, this helps inform us how we can prevent ourselves from getting sick. Now, how these scientists got their results is by recruiting volunteers to collect blood from and isolate their monocytes and macrophages, as well as compare these cells to a laboratory strain of macrophages and test their responses to different stimuli. What they found is that when they stimulate TLR4 in the, pres or in the presence of high alcohol concentrations in the cell, the TLR4 mediated responses were inhibited. However, when they specifically stimulated TLR3, alcohol had no, or high alcohol concentrations had no effect on this type of signaling. So to investigate further, they looked at the specific components of each of these signaling pathways and found that when there is high alcohol concentrations, there is a recruitment of heat shock protein A1A, which prevents phosphorylation of NF-kappa B, preventing its translocation to the nucleus which stops the uh, secretion of TNF-alpha and IL-6, whereas alcohol also recruits protein phosphatase 1, which prevents the dephosphorylation of IRF3, preventing its translocation to the nucleus, which prevents interferon beta and RANTES secretion. But again, when stimulated with TLR3 stimuli, increased alcohol concentrations had no effect. So as a take-home message, they found that binge alcohol consumption inhibits uh, your bacterial immune response, in particular TLR4-mediated immunity to gram-negative bacteria, and has no effect on TLR3-mediated viral immune responses. Once again, this is important because by figuring out which pathways are inhibited, specific treatments can be provided for alcohol-abusing patients, and we can also understand more about the pathophysiological effects of binge drinking on humans. Now, with every scientific discovery, there's always more questions to be asked. And I had a couple of my own. First off, I was curious how uh, binge alcohol consumption affects men and women differently. Furthermore, we have a lot of different types of immune cells. How is binge alcohol consumption affecting any of these other cells? And in particular, our ability to fight off infections as a result of how alcohol affects these cells. So these are some, a couple insights that I thought of. Of course, there are more, but hopefully we'll get to see some of these in the future. Ultimately though, I hope you learned something and enjoyed your time and thank you for listening.